from the Service Electric Studio, it's the Mike Zambelli Show. Music Fest 2019, now approximately 10 weeks away, but I'm sure you are all aware of that. We are going to start our road to Music Fest with a talk about uh, uh, comedy plats and funny guys, Tyler Rothrock and George Wacker on this week's show. But first, here is this week's edition of I've Got News. Start right here locally. The Lehigh Valley skyline has uh, been forever changed. It was this past Sunday morning at 7.03 that nearly 500 pounds of explosive brought down Martin Tower, the tallest building in the valley. The former Bethlehem Steel headquarters has sat vacant for over a decade. The existence of asbestos throughout the, uh, the, the building caused delays and called into question what could be done with the tower. A number of ideas came about as to how to repurpose the structure, but in the end it was decided to raise the tower to make room for future developments. Crowds gathered and cameras rolled as the once proud symbol of American industry fell to the earth in just 14 seconds, I've also been aware that uh, some of the Bethlehem people are finding tough time getting around over there. I think Waze has taken a good hit over there as well. Baseball biz, congratulations go out to Iron Pigs pitcher Nick Pavetta. Last week, Pavetta struck out 11 batters in seven innings of work to earn himself the honor of... International League Pitcher of the Week. Since coming back to the Pigs, Pavetta recorded a 3.09 ERA with three wins and one loss. Pavetta also holds the lead in the International League for both batting average against and whip. That, by the way, is walks, hits per innings pitched. He also has 45 strikeouts. With numbers like that, you won't see him pulling back any chair, taking a seat anytime soon. That is an inside joke with our guys when he did our inside the pig pen. And finally, nationally, the Game of Thrones is over, and with it, one of HBO's most successful series. The pop culture phenomenon aired in its last episode this past Sunday, a culmination of 11 years of fantasy and politics. Based on George R.R. Uh, Martin's books, A Song of Ice and Fire, the HBO series can boast a rare claim for a long-running TV series. Its audience has grown in each and every season. That's some kind of run. The final episode shattered previous records with 19.3 million people turning in to see who takes the crowns. If you missed any or want to revisit the series from the start, give us a call right here at Service Electric or visit our website at sectv.com and we'll get you hooked up and you can catch Game of Thrones. We're going to be talking comedy when we return. Tyler Rothrock, George Wacker, this week's guest as we preview Music Fest 2019.
It was the idea of Tyler Rothrock to add comedy to Music Fest over there in Bethlehem. It happened uh, three years. Actually, this will be the third year for it. He gave them that first year to kind of do a dry run. It all worked out good. And last year they had their own plots, and they'll continue to have comedy plots coming up this year for a third season. Tyler Rothrock joined by George Wacker. Guys, welcome to the show. And right. Tyler, congratulations to you. you got to be real proud of being able to bring comedy and a little levity to Music Fest. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's all my idea, not George at all. <laughs> Only, only you like when I give you that credit. Yeah, huh? You that. like that. Yeah, we're going to keep that as a sound bite. Well, I was, George is the, he's the finance, but he was the finance behind the yeah, first I'm the, year. I'm the money. He's the money guy. <laughs> no, it's cool. We're, we're excited. Uh, it's been growing every year. And, you know, we've got to bring some really high quality acts over the past couple of years. So it's fun. Of course, we've had you on the show before. You've talked about your podcast, but you have some exciting news. Both of you are going to be uh, part of uh, PBS. Uh, talk about your relationship with them and how's that's, uh, how that's going to take <laughs> off for you guys. George, you want to weigh in on that? Sure. No, it's, it's been fantastic. We I'm sure. started a podcast about a year ago. Mm -hmm. um, it was just me and him. We didn't know if anybody was listening, really. And, and apparently, like, at least one person did. But no, <laughs> our, our podcast, the Lehigh Valley Would Love podcast, it's all local uh, local topics, and we mm -hmm. bring in local guests, and we are lucky enough to have the opportunity to record eight shows with PBS that will start airing in June, and we, we hope people really enjoy them. We think it's a fun, maybe a different way to, to kind of to meet some local people who live around. Plus, yeah, I know you two guys are adamant on selling the Lehigh Valley as well. That's a, that'll be a big part of what you guys do with them. Well, the, the Lehigh Valley is no different than you know any other area. We have a lot of people here. There's a lot of exciting things. Mm -hmm. You know, sure, we're, we're close to New York and Philly, but for a lot of that, you, you don't need to go to New York and Philly to experience a lot of the, uh, the great things to do and obviously some of the fantastic people who live around yeah, here Yeah, that's well. for sure. What's the slot time? What's, uh, what's the <laughs> air time? I know you guys are excited about that. Yeah. Well, we think it's an appropriate time. It's midnight. <laughs> <laughs> Mid Midnight's about Midnight, where I think huh? we belong. Yeah. I don't think it's where the dinner crowd. It, no. It's fun, but we, we definitely, um, you, you know, we try to push it a little bit just to, with the, with the mm -hmm. humor, the but yeah. it's more of a late night format, and we think, you know, people might enjoy that. George, how tough is that to walk that fine line when you're, you know, you're, you're taking a shot at somebody, but you never know how it's going to be perceived? Well, you know, I, I don't think that we necessarily take shots at anybody in particular. As much as we look at it like this, we live in the Lehigh Valley. It's kind of like our brother. So we're allowed to make fun of it. But if you live in, <laughs> if you live in Scranton or somewhere else, you know, it's, hey, you're not allowed to say that about our brother. So it's really, it's, we joke because we care kind of thing. Um, and mm -hmm. we think that the Lehigh Valley is big enough that it deserves, you know, that kind of humor. And, 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 and it really is. I mean, when you look at what's going on around here, I mean, we obviously cover a lot of sports here at Service Electric, the Iron Pigs, the Phantoms, and all the good stuff that's happening there. And, you know, then you have uh, on the other end of it uh, things like Martin Tower being imploded on <laughs> Sunday. That, that certainly gives, uh, Tyler, that gives you a lot of material. Huh? Yeah, I mean, I didn't... <sighs> I didn't realize how much I cared about Martin Tower all these years. <laughs> it was just this empty thing. <laughs> and, and now it's gone. And I was sad when it came down. It, you know, and we, come, we did a lot of uh, joking about it in the weeks leading up. I and mean, we found out a lot of Bethlehem residents had very strong opinions about Martin Tower. There's a passion there with yeah. it. I mean, of course, affiliated with Bethlehem Steel yeah. and became their main offices and the history, like, like I said in our open, and I've got news. I mean, you're talking about an American history that was right here mm -hmm. in the Lehigh Valley yeah. with the making of steel. Yeah, yeah, it's insane. It's To think of, that's what really blew me away, is that I really didn't know too much about what happened, you know, in that tower or really at Bethlehem Steel, and then over the last couple of weeks, you know, you, you read some articles and you learn some things like, what? that's crazy that all that was going on. We, all these other buildings in Skylines across the country have our steel, or not our steel, but Bethlehem Steel. Yeah, it's our steel. And, yeah, yeah it's you're our steel. right. That's yeah. our brother. So <laughs> I, I, I understand where the passion comes from at now, you know? Mm-hmm. I wonder how people in Bethlehem are going to make their way around here. A lot of, a lot of folks use that as a, as yeah. a, van, as a point of reference yeah, as to where they yeah. were going. I was a couple late nights at OBT, I was like, <laughs> I just find, look for the tower. <laughs> Let's go back to Music Fest and, of course, uh, staying in the Christmas City uh, Music Fest coming up. What is it going to be? 36 years. Started back in 1984. There were 180,000 uh, people. At show. Now you get over 900,000. Tyler, why has that event been? And, and you've been around. You perform in New York. You've been around different communities. Why has this, this festival uh, been so successful? I think 
you know, they do a really good job of diversifying the acts that they book. I think there's a lot of acts that are mainstays that people look forward to coming every year. And I think every year they add a new plots or a new thing that can attract it keeps the the event that's where you f fall into the yeah, chain yeah. I, I mean the comedy plots mm -hmm. was you know you felt a need for that and your 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 right. idea with that certainly has proven to be a successful yeah one. But that's kind of where the the whole idea came from you know it's like the pride my pride of the Leah Valley I wanted my friends from New York and outside to come see this festival because anybody I've never met anybody that walked away from music fest that didn't have a good time. Absolutely. And it's been fun to share that experience and every comedian that that I've been friends with that's come to do mm -hmm. it, they've all said the same thing. They're blown away by how cool it is. And, and music, they did win, um, I believe it's the USA Today, won a recent poll as the best music festival in the nation. I mean, is that right? Uh, it, was, it was a you know a voting poll, but they won. And to Tyler's point, I think really, the, what's great about Music Fest is the diversity. You're gonna have, you know, you have country artists, and then hip hop artists that you could see on the same day uh, within like just by walking to them. And yeah. so I think having comedy in there is part of that diversity. Well, the other thing too is most of the acts are free. People like sure. free. You know, one thing I found I out, love free. people, yeah, I love free. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, so, and they've added uh, so much more uh, to that. Um, when do you finalize your lineup with comedians? That's kind of, you kind of got to wait and see kind of thing on who's available with that. Is that yeah. correct? Well, I've kind of, uh, over the years, I've recused myself from selecting. Because mm -hmm. I have Are you a lot. perform? Yeah, I'll do some. Awesome. George awesome. won't. George, I, I will not. George, no? George will be in the, I show he'll up be doing the lights. And tell everybody He's the money it. man, right? <laughs> He's, <laughs> He's going to pay, yeah, right? He's the yeah, producer, yeah, as right. they call it. And we're happy <laughs> to have that. him. Yes. But yeah, yeah I, uh, the, there's a committee that will pick the acts. Um, yeah, Ryan Hill from Arts Quest, Addy uh, Teal from Arts Quest, and uh, you know we'll 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 have a couple days where we watch all the submission videos, which mm -hmm. is fun, you know, because there's some really good ones, and then there's some yeah right ones that right. are a little uncomfortable. Right. Right. And, that would uh, be my, my submission. Do you worry <laughs> about? Do you worry about someone that you bring in crossing the line and creating a stir that you really don't want to happen? Uh, and guys in your profession have to understand and, and I would think be aware of, you know, what they're dealing with, the crowds. How important yeah. is that to a, a comedian coming into an area? I don't care myself. I think, jo I think the other people, it's lucky that I have other people around me that do care about those right, things. Right, right. Because as the, the comedian in me wants to push the boundaries. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you have to get advice from others to reel it back in. I, I think, too, they do a great job of the people who, you know, Ryan and, and Addie and picking these comedians. We just talked about diversity, but then there's diversity in the comedians. So you have comedians of all different walks of life, mm -hmm. you know, men, women, I don't want to say children, but we have some younger ones who are, mm -hmm. I don't know, there was one last year, maybe it was 19 or 20. So you have diverse comedians from all different walks of life who have all their own types of ideas and jokes. So, you know, it's not just even one type of comedy. So I think that's exciting, too. Yeah, yeah. Tyler, you, I mentioned you, you've been performing in New York. Has there been a moment that you wished you could take back and something that you did that you thought was funny at the time, but then after you thought about it, say, boy, I wish I wouldn't have gone there? Just, yeah. in, the, just in the act. <laughs> <laughs> well, the whole thing I would have taken back. <laughs> uh, I should have stayed in college, I think. Uh, no, there's definitely been moments where I've uh, said some things that I shouldn't have said, and... Uh, I kind of, you know, I, I learned a, a lesson the hard way early on when if somebody's, it's more when somebody's heckling you, you get mad. Yeah, right. And That's so never say something worse than they said to you. <laughs> yeah, right, that, right. The hard way. Right. But it's all learning experience, so I can't really regret anything, yeah. anything that I've George, done. George, how about for yourself? For me? Yeah. <laughs> you know, I've been, I've been very fortunate and blessed to be able to even be in the position I'm in. So we all make mistakes and... Mm -hmm. uh, I think just like Tyler, you learn from them, you improve upon them, and we come back bigger and better. So, Lehigh Valley with Love Media .com. Tell us about that. You're the founder sure, of that. Sure, sure. Lehigh Valley with Love is a blog we started back in 2008. You know, it did pretty well with a lot of funny um, blog topics that we would make fun of local news. Mm -hmm. uh, Lehigh Valley with Love Media is the company that oversees that, and we work with a lot of great organizations in the Lehigh Valley, and we're able to put on events like this. Um, you know, we're able to get uh, some of our teams and some other things, like the, the Lehigh Valley Grand Prix is coming up. We're going to be a part of that. 
So we're, we're very happy to have a company that can not only serve the Lehigh Valley, but also participate in it as well. Let's talk about your alma mater, Moravian College. You graduated 2003. You are the, you are the, <laughs> you are the wow. vice president of alumni and on the board there, mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Griggs. You've got to be excited about... Oh, Dr. Griggs, you should have him on a, on a show. He's... He's one of the, the oh, the, we've talked my to him. Favorite on, guy. Oh, he's a good man. We've talked to him on a number of occasions. I'm very bi biased to uh, Moravian College. I went there, but the Lehigh Valley's home to another one of the great things that makes it special is just having so many different types of uh, colleges and universities. I'm biased to Moravian. I'm very happy that I went there, uh, but there, there's so many great, you know, other colleges to to be a part of. How did it help to create? Uh, who's been influential in your career and where you are right now? Oh man, I've had a lot. You know, my, my family's been very influential, and it's been you know the people who have even friends like Tyler and people who have. I was hoping uh, he was going to say, hey, <laughs> I was waiting for it. Well, because you get to, whenever you're trying something new, you get discouraged. You're like, man, you know, I, maybe I made that joke, and and then there's other people saying, mm -hmm. hey, you know, that's funny, keep it up. Um, you know, we've worked with a lot of great people, and it's it, we we're fortunate to be where we are. And that's the thing, we're always looking, even on our podcast, like we're getting in guests. Who we've never personally met before, and it totally opens your eyes to all the great things that are out there. It's, yeah, it's for sure. Tyler, uh, I kind of know the answer to question with you, and I know the people that have been around you. I've I've seen you uh, grow into a, a young man, but. Uh, the Christmas City Classic, unfortunately, has taken a little bit of a turn. We don't have the banquet now. The games aren't played in a minute. The, the games are played a little later on. So there's a little change in thought right there. But you like it. It's going to be more centered to where your dad and George Yasso really started it all, and that's with the youth in the city of Bethlehem. Yeah. I mean, that was their – that was always uh, a big uh, component in their lives is, you know, teaching – uh, not just basketball, but life. To, so it made them both successful, yeah, really. Yeah, they did a good job of, uh, you know, nurturing the youth. And I I, I benefited from it because my dad, you know, taught me stuff growing up. I, and George the same way. So mm -hmm. And George's uh, children, Hank and Victoria, Keep doing a good job. they're going to step into a, the role and they they got some exciting things coming. And who the the future of the Christmas City Classic is mm -hmm. is exciting and there's going to be some cool things coming. Yeah, it certainly is. That's for sure. You can catch these two guys again. There are eight episodes of their podcast will be airing on PBS. We'll talk more about the upcoming music fest. So we're going to talk a little bit about the Indianapolis 500 coming up. Marco Andretti, real close friend to Tyler Rothrock. <laughs> Stay with it. All that stuff coming up next.
Sunday, May 26th, will be the running of the Great American Race. The Indianapolis 500, Marco Andretti, will be in the field. will also be represented here in the Lehigh Valley by Sage Karam. Both have qualified. Sage will start in row 11. Marco will start in row 4. Tyler, have you talked to uh, Marco, and what's his feeling? I mean, this is... This is their Super Bowl. It's yeah. a, you know, racing's like on a, any other sport. They do their Super Bowl at the beginning of the year and then <laughs> play out the regular yeah. season. But this is a big one for Marco. Yeah, it's, it's big. He's, uh, he's excited. He, he's pretty uh, optimistic about his car. Which he, They're always good there. His team, Andretti, is always good in, in Indy. Um, so he's just – it's all – you know, the, the whole month of May is dedicated to dialing the cars in to um, – and with the most precise adjustments to get, get those have things. Have you been there? Have you gone to yeah. the Indy? How many have you seen? I've been to one. one? Or two. I've been to two, two? yeah. Yeah, not yeah. going this year? I'm not going to go this year. But Will you watch it on TV? Oh, yeah, for mm -hmm. sure. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, yeah it's, it's something. It's, it's one of those races, though, where I know Sage is starting a little farther back, but uh, and the drivers always say this, you could win from anywhere. Yeah. If you're in the race, you have a chance to win. Yeah, 500 laps a long time, that's mm -hmm. for sure. How important a year is this for Marco? I mean, it's been over a decade since he last, you know, last won one, last uh, got victory lane. Uh, got to be pretty important, I would think, for him to get a victory somewhere this year. Yeah, he's, you know, he, he always got the, the, the monkeys on his back, I think, a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, uh, he's waiting to win. Got a lot of great things going on in every other area of his life, so I think he's, yeah, he he's very uh, centered and, you know, confident. There's a long way to be in a good place in he's life. In a great when place you're... in life, and mm -hmm. I th he, you, uh, but this race is one of you cannot win for ten years, and if you win this race, it doesn't matter. So this that's is the right. one. You know, well, his father, 1969. Yeah, you yeah. know, certainly that. Actually, uh, I think it is the. Is it the fifth? How many years ago was that? Fifty. Fifty. So it's the fiftieth anniversary of Mario winning yeah, that's that awesome. race. So. That's pretty awesome. I should say Marco did have a victory, the Grand Prix at Steel Stacks, that's right. right? You guys, right? right? That's the, yeah. that's coming up too. Is he? Are yeah. we? Gonna he was see? the money behind that as well. So. <laughs> you know, we have these funny things. All please. Um, How'd you get Marco to show up for that? <laughs> we, we asked him. Well, but I got a text. I asked him to do it, and he didn't know if mm -hmm. he could or anything. And we had our team ready. And, um, you know, we had George as a driver. Mm -hmm. And we knew that it, we were going to have a, a rough go of winning if we had to have George. <laughs> so, so that was a pretty easy call to replace right, George right. Wait, and I, Marco. No, I still drove. Oh, we, you drove. We replaced, a, we replaced one so. of our friends who was gracious enough to, mm -hmm. to allow yeah. Marco to take his well, Marco spot. Marco texted me and went, hey, what are you up to? And I said, I'm doing this. Lee Valley Grand Prix, and he said, do you think it would be cool if I came and drove? That's awesome. Said, yeah, I think we could do <laughs> it. Think? I think it was pretty neat fun. watching him. He, he rolls in, and then once you see, you know, a lot of people who are at the event are, are racing fans. Mm -hmm. You see them start to realize who it is. Mm -hmm. it, it was really neat mm -hmm. to yeah. watch. And then he was, you know, when he's racing, you know, he's having fun out there. I, when I'm racing, I, I can, you know, I'm trying to get around, <laughs> not hit anything. You're he's saying out. he was relaxed in the car. He, he was, was pretty uh, relaxed. In it's it. like he, he's like he did it before. <laughs> I think he was taking some selfies as he was driving. <laughs> so, but we, um, we were lucky enough to come away with a win. I, I don't want to say it's because of Marco, but it was because of Marco. <laughs> Coming up so. again uh, the weekend of uh, June fifteenth, I guess it is. Mm -hmm. uh, you guys will be in there again. Uh, what's the chances? Is how's his schedule work for this year? Are you get, trying to get him back again? Trying to. I think. Well, the negotiations are going decent with our owner over yeah. here. So right, and we I heard think... Sage is going to be on a, on a yeah. different team. Yeah. So we have to. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Oh, so, so you're we're... gonna have two IndyCar guys there. Mm -hmm. So uh, oh. and, and I mean, I can't make any promise promises for anybody but I know that you know there have been talks about it and even um, without them obviously it's, it's great to have them but even without them it's a really fun event and people can come and ride the ride the go-karts and feel like you're out there not quite IndyCar but mm -hmm. close yeah that's close. pretty awesome that's 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 awesome stuff uh, I know you're a golfer yeah let's talk about Brooks Kepka. yeah I know you follow it I just you know it's it's hard for me to believe that New York fans were chanting DJ, that whole scenario there. I know you had a close look at it, and you're kind of in amazement. What is it about Bruce Kepka that he just keeps flying under the record? I mean, this guy can play the game. I don't know. I don't know what – people just aren't giving him any credit. I, I don't know what more he has to do. I think maybe he's not flashy enough for the fans. He, his, he's kind of private. DJ has obviously – if you follow golf, he's got he has a long history of 
scandals and incidents. He has and had some uh, some problems, yeah. But yeah. Brooks has gone without that. You would think he could have. The thing for me with Brooks Kepka though, is the journey. I mean, he's played overseas. Yeah. He wasn't one of those guys that came into the game out of college where, you know, it, he was a can't miss like a Jordan Spieth. Yeah. I mean, he went overseas to hone his game and then came back and had a hard uh, uh, Injured hand uh, mm -hmm. last year cost him to miss the Masters, but uh, yeah, it's an uphill battle for him. I like his answers, though. He uses his, that motivation yeah. to continue to push himself and get better. Yeah, I, that to me, that's a story that's more impressive than being a phenom. I think maybe mm -hmm. our society is a little, uh, we love the phenom story. We love the prodigy story. Absolutely. But I think a more relatable story would be somebody that works their tail off just like and Brooks then gets, Kepka. gets there. Yeah. I mean, he was in, I think he was uh, on the European tour for a while. A long time. That's right. He was over in Asia. I mm -hmm. mean, yeah. yeah. And you're not making, you know, a ton of money. It's a, You really have to, you know, want, love the game to Tell you keep what, going. If I'm the rest of the guys in the PGA tour, I'm hoping that they lay off him a little bit yeah. because he's using it to fuel his fire yeah, and it is burning yeah. hot right now. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I, I, there's not somebody that I would probably yeah. – Pick on my team, mm -hmm. maybe Ty I'm a Tiger fan. Yeah, but. right. Yeah, right. How's your golf game? I know you picked yeah. it up a couple of years ago. I I'm, I play all right. I did. I, I've only played once. I, we were in the scramble for the the Yasso mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. scramble, and I think we we won. But I'm not. We didn't. I had to leave before. Uh -huh. I think there was. You know, I mean, we might have won. So but it was fun. the guys that you were with kept all the prizes, then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, they also made all the shots. So. Yeah, right. George, you a golfer? You didn't. I am not. You're not a golfer. I, I did. I ran track at Moravian College, but that's as far as I went. How about the my... track team at Moravian yeah, College? They've been Still really. You're, you, and your name's in the record book. I, I'm on the DMR uh, medley relay record team. Right? Believe it or not. Yeah. Uh, a long time ago. It a is runner, hard for huh? me to believe that. <laughs> 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 but no, they've been great. Like I was saying, like Moravians, especially for track and cross country, it's one of those sports that you can be a very high level athlete and say hey I still want to go D3 for different like, academic reasons or whatnot um, and they do they do a fantastic job and their facilities there are really really great yeah they really are uh, guys uh, it's been great having you here George what are you most excited about now with the relationship coming up with the podcast PBS will give you a little notoriety what are you most excited about with you that? know it's one of those things where I really enjoy the ride, honestly, because you never know. We've been fortunate to, to have a comedy plots and uh, do a lot of fun things, and you never know if it's going to end. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I kind of just want to take it one event at a time and have a great time. Uh, the the Grand Prix is going to be crazy exciting oh, and such a fun day. day. Yes, uh, comedy plots is always great to to not even just to be there and see all the comics, and then you know when you fill up the the ice house there is where we hold it. When you fill that up, you know, and there's so many people there, it's a it's great, a great feeling. Reward. So I, I'm along for the ride, and hopefully we can put together some more things that people enjoy and keep it going. Tyler, uh, same for you. Wish you good luck, George. Uh, same with you there. What are you most excited about this year's uh, uh, edition? Uh, you, you'll be on PBS as well, and, of course, the comedy plots. I know you're excited about it. Yeah, it's all exciting. It's all exciting stuff. We're just, like George said, we're just kind of, we, we, you know, we didn't know any of this stuff was happening. We got a call one day to meet with PBS and... I kind of sat there after a while, I'm like, what are, what are we doing here? What do you guys want from us? And so it's good to know that people like what we're doing. That's the, that's yeah, the thing. Yeah, we can't thank them enough. Yeah, we, you know, it's, it's been great. It's, I mean, that's your feedback, right? Yeah. I mean, when you hear the positive, that's your feedback. Yeah, we were doing this podcast in George's attic, and we didn't know if people, were, anybody was out there listening. <laughs> so, you know, it's just nice to know that somebody is, and there's people that are, you know, interacting. Besides, like, my dad. He's like, there's a good yeah. show. He's our biggest fan. Like, thanks. But, what's, your, what's your schedule like these days? I mean, you're back home now in the yeah. Lehigh Valley, correct? You were living up in New York for a while. Uh -huh. Yeah, I'm back here uh, working on the show. My schedule, uh, I'm, we're f I'm directing a pilot with my friend Chris Freed. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, we're filming it in the Lehigh Valley and a couple of scenes in New York. So kind of just putting a lot of irons in the fire, just staying creative. Yeah, good stuff. Uh, I know you guys had a little deal where you were trying to, to vote the best hot dog and best pizza. <laughs> I didn't see I didn't see a final line on that, uh, George. What is <laughs> what is the George? George has a his favorite pizza is a plain pie. From which Mar Marlucci's in Bethlehem is my favorite pizza. Mm -hmm. I like it plain, is but hot, the hot dogs. You know, Yakos is the king, but no. Pots hot dogs Don't, are the best. Yeah, Pots hot Pots, dogs are the best. And, and, Again, you spoken, can't go spoken wrong. Spoken like a Moravian guy there. <laughs> Did you, you visit Pots when you went no, to Moravian? What was your order? <laughs> 
like five hot dogs with everything <laughs> on them and cheese. Okay. So, but you can't you can't go wrong with any Lehigh Valley hot dog place. There's so many and they're all great. It's, yeah. You know, I just would you know if I had to pick, it'd be pots. Mm-hmm. But I would take a Jimmy's any day. I'd yeah, take a Jimmy Yacos. had a good one. You see yeah. what really gets George passionate? <laughs> yeah, he, he, you know, did, he really he did lights perk up, up, didn't he? A little bit there. <laughs> it's exciting because yeah. it's, it's it's like one of those fascinating things that. Um, you get to argue about, but it, it, yeah, everybody wins when you argue about the hot best dogs. hot dog. Yeah, that's for sure. Tyler, how do you take your hot dogs? I like uh, Pots hot dogs, and I like mustard and chili. Uh-huh. And that, just two, though. I don't In fact, know, we're you're... actually going there after oh, yeah, this. we're going there. <laughs> <laughs> you going to have a couple to go? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah run yeah. it through the garden, that's yeah. for sure. <laughs> Guys, want to wish you the very best. Good luck with the podcast. Hope all goes well at Music Fest, and look forward to having you guys back on the show very soon. Thank you. Thank you. Fun. Tyler Rothrock, George Walker, they'll be at Music Fest 2019. Visit the website, of course, for Music Fest, musicfest.org. That is music with a K. Certainly hope you enjoyed this week's show. For all of us here at TV2 Sports, I'm Mike Zambelli. Enjoy the remainder of your evening.